Hi everyone, welcome to the Rosehip Island studio. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this video from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm a Swedish expat and I record videos about knitting and yarn dyeing and um, other making and creating, but honestly, mostly about my knitting because knitting is something that I really love and enjoy talking about. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. If you are new or returning viewer, I really appreciate the time that you spend with me here. I have been absent from YouTube and a lot of social media for some time. And uh, many of you will know the reasons. I will give you a bit of a life update at the end of this video but really I just wanted to have some time to sit here and um, just talk about my knitting and let you know what I've been working in working on and just um, enjoy some time uh, surrounded about the, the things that I love so that's what I want to do but if you're curious um, yeah just check the end of the video and I will do my best to give you a bit of a life, life update. <laughs> Today I'm going to try to uh, do my very best to keep things um, in an okay format that I will not have to edit. I just want to give it a go. It might not happen. I might change my mind when I look at this after I record but I just feel like if I can get away with just doing this as a very uh, informal, natural, sit down, having a talk video without any editing, it will save me so much time and energy and um, I could use that for other things. <laughs> and it might mean that I will um, feel more up to doing um, regular videos again. So we'll see how it go, but I know myself because I have been watching quite a bit of uh, knitting YouTube videos um, over summer. Um, I don't really feel like the very edited, very professional podcasts or vlogs are at all what I prefer to watch. So I think any way I can do it that works it will be fine and um, hopefully it will work for for um, anyone who um, watches my videos anyway um, let's get on with things I re just really want to show you what I've been up to since I last recorded a video we've had summer we're now moving into autumn here in Tasmania which I am quite happy about. This summer and the heat was not really working for me. Um, so now that the weather is cooling down, I'm really loving it. I did work on quite a few things over summer and because it was so hot, I just sort of finished things and just left it without doing the really the final touches to things. Um, but I'm now inspired to start doing that because I really want to have new items that I can um, wear at work and for different things. I feel like I have moved into more making items um, with a, a purpose for something particular in my life, like a particular situation or a um, situation where I, I need a certain garment or um, certain items. So trying to be a bit my, more mindful about what I'm making and why I'm making it and how it will fit into my life. So we'll see. Um, hopefully that means that I can wear all the things that I'm making and they won't just be sitting in my wardrobe. <laughs> Sorry, I need a little bit of um, um, something to drink. Okay, so I have no idea really where I left off when I talked to you end of 2022. But I know that I have a few things that I 
I talked about then and I have worked more on and, and finished so I'll, I'll show you some of that first thing I'll show you is this cardigan that I made last year and over summer I, I think I was still on the top here because um, and this is a cardigan by uh, Maya Karlsson a Swedish designer and I've knitted in some wool from Klippan a woolen mill in Sweden um, it's it's knit from the bottom up and I only had two 100 gram skeins of the red so when I came up here I ran out of the red so I had to have a think about how I was going to solve that I wasn't too sure about what I would do uh, but in the end I just made this up as I went really um, and finished off with a purple because I thought well either I just do that and if it looks good looks good and if it doesn't I'll just I guess wear it in the dark but not finishing it I could not wear it at all so <laughs> uh, but it turned out great I'm really happy with how that um, turned out and I picked up the 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 bands for the front and over summer I actually stated as well um, but that's how far I got I just did that because I it was just too hot during the summer to to wear it and I thought it's going to be ages until I actually need to wear this so I just left it like this because the work of um, doing the finishing of the steak just to I think I'll just sew down that that um, those extra steak stitches I'll just sew them down on the back and then I'll have to find some buttons and then it's it's all done I've sewn in we've woven in all the ends I think yes so I just need to do that finishing which is a typical thing that I just do not enjoy doing so I just wait until I can't can't look at it any longer unfinished so um, it's fine how it is I've done a crochet steak and I've also done a seam on the sewing machine on those stitches behind there you can see um, so it's it will be fine just the way it is but I think just um, just sewing them down sewing that bit down will make it nice and flat and, and look better um but yes i'm very happy with this very very happy i'm looking forward to wearing it and um i've been very interested in in cardigan construction and shapes um and cardigans made out of different type of yarn because i really felt like cardigans is something i'm really lacking in my wardrobe i wear cardigans a lot and i um I have quite a few sort of cotton ones, thin ones that I wear with dresses um, and I've been wearing them at work a lot because I feel like it's, it's um, you're a bit more dressed in, in a nice thin cardigan with a dress um, than just wearing, I don't know, jeans and a t-shirt, which is what I normally would wear. So I just felt like I wanted to actually knit a cardigan that would feel like a good a good weight and a good fit for the office and you know if you've watched my videos before and if you've followed me on Instagram you know that um, I do a lot of color work I've made quite a lot of heavier weight color work jumpers which I love I love making them I like wearing them I like the way they look but they don't really go with how I imagine my office wardrobe <laughs> to be. So I've, I've done so many hours on Ravelry looking through cardigans and it's just trying to look at different photos and figuring out what it is that I actually need to make. But not only that, because I can see things that I really would like to make, but they you know they're knitted in pieces or the the gauge is you know so many stitches per 10 centimeters that I could never achieve it or if 
I did, I would not enjoy knitting it. So I'm trying to find that um, balance between what I would actually enjoy knitting and what I need the cardigan to look like as a finished product. So yes, I've spent a lot of time on that, but I've this is a fingering weight cardigan uh, and um, it's a bit shorter and I think it has that sort of more lighter, neater look, even though it has a lot of, of color in it. Um, it's sort of heading the right direction of what I'd like to make. So that's one thing, it's sort of finished, um, but not, not really. It's not finished enough that I can wear it. Another um, thing that I would have shown you last time, oh, this was not very clever to put it here. Um, I made this jumper uh, out of a yarn that I picked up in a thrift store in an op shop. I think it was Salvos. I picked up 10 of these skeins and I think I used about seven to make this. And this is a um, stripes sweater by Andrea Maori. And obviously it does not have stripes, but I follow the pattern for that. And I think this is the third one I've made because I just find that it fits really well, how it's constructed. So it's just a top down one. I did straight sleeves and then just um, did the creases before the, the um, cuff. And it's a nice sort of hip length. Um, A lighter weight jumper. I think this will work as a more office wear but it's a bit fun. I have no idea what the material is, what the fibre is. It could be plastic, I don't know. It feels a bit funny but I, I should be able to wear this now actually. It's all, it's completely finished. I don't think I washed it actually so I should do that. But it's completely finished for wearing and I think the weather is at that point now where I could wear a long sleeve jumper in the office um, without being too hot and it's not very thick so I'll be wearing that soon. So that's something that I finished over summer. Very happy with it and I, I have another couple of... Um, sweater quantities of um, secondhand yarn that I picked up, some crazy stuff. So I'd like to um, use them soon to make something else. So that's that jumper. I know that I'm going through things without uh, giving too many details and that's basically because I've forgotten. <laughs> These things have just been sitting here um, for some time finished so I might just this time, because I'm going to try very hard not to edit the video, put the information in the description box below the video on YouTube. Let's see how that goes. And I do um, keep quite good um, track of everything on Ravelry. So if there's anything you'd like to see more of or know details of, check out Ravelry. And I have actually lately updated Ravelry quite a bit. I've uh, tried to go back and actually put in the quantities of yarn that I've used because I started to get a bit slack with that and I've also started to tidy up my favourites and it's interesting to see my favourites because I have been on Ravelry I don't know 15 years I don't know for a long time so you know I have so many baby things and you know from when that was relevant in my life so I've just trying to slim down my favorites because I do use the search function and um, searching by favorites or in my library and things like that a lot in Ravelry so tidying it up has helped um, so I have have done that um, 
and I think maybe because social media was just did a bit too much for me uh, in the last few months and I, I feel like Instagram is so much about other people whereas on Ravelry I can choose to just look at my my own stuff and keep track of my own things uh, and not yes just get drawn into everything else that's happening with people so it's been a more quiet space for me I guess um I know Ravelry is not for everyone but for me it it, it works really well so on Ravelry I'm Rosie Byland if you want to look for me there and on Instagram I'm also Rosie Byland and then I think this um, kids jumper I had I think I had finished it last time I made it out made it out of old stash of a um, merino bamboo I think it is a, a DK weight quite a heavy yarn and I held it double with a faux mohair um, from spotlight in orange so it's one strand of a white or pink I've striped white and pink in one strand of the orange um fake mohair um just to make that and i i think i said last time that i was going to make it a bit longer in the body but it turned out actually thank goodness that the length was okay and i just left it and i've you know sewn in all the ends and it's ready for um cold weather but again it's just been sitting here because it has not been the season for it but i was very happy to get all that old um stash of that bamboo merino used up and those that um orange fake mohair was some i think one dollar a ball or something on a clearance in spotlight so it was um uh, a very inexpensive way to then be able to make use of the the other yarn and actually use it up so that's a bit of a fun thing the pattern i used i think was um i think it's called walton again i'll put details down below and on ravelry so um i've got that done for autumn and winter and I don't think there's anything the other things that are from before. Let me see. Maybe I'll do this in sort of chronological order of when I finish things. Um I did sign up for a test knit before Christmas, I think. And uh, haven't been doing test knits for a while because again, time. Um valuable <laughs> and um but stephanie lotman had a call out for a test knit for a cow and i have knit her cows before maybe i did start to show this last time did i oh if i have shown this before um bear with me i'll just do it again and then we'll move on stephanie lotman um her cows, I've, I've tested for her before. I really not like her bandana cows that she does. And um, she did one for uh, mini skeins. I think for five or 10 gram mini skeins in, I think it's 24 colors. So it was sort of an advent thing. And I have so many small minis left from advent calendars that I have made over the past few years. So I signed up for that and made this bandana cowl. I think, oh, it's called Little Leftovers Cowl, I believe. And I think it was something she did. She did, um, I think she did a shawl for an advent calendar. And then she came up with this to use up those sort of little extra bits of yarn that you had left after making the shawl. So these are all my hand-dyed um sock yarn from old advent calendars and other things so that was lots of fun to make 
I did start waving in the ends, but I have some left. Not, not too many, but some. It's, I guess, a fun pop of, of colour to wear. It's just really fun way to use up lots of colourful scraps or minis. The order I did them was mostly based on um, how much I had left of them. I do think it's in the pattern written out approximate um, meter you need for each of the sections. So I just weighed all of the minis that I wanted to use and started with the ones that I had the least of. No, yes. And then worked my way to the ones that I had a bit more of. So that's the little leftovers cow. Can't remember if I showed it or not. It was a while ago. Then I have a few new things. And let's see, let's do some hats. Um, for reasons that I think I put on Instagram, well, I did put on Instagram and a lot of you will know about it. And if not, it doesn't matter. But I started looking at making hats, chemo hats, basically. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just, it was just something I needed to get out of my system, I think. So I, I did that and um, I don't know, I think I made them. I think it was well spent time because it was, I needed to to do it and work on it. But I don't know that it, the hats are actually something that I'm going to be using much. But it doesn't matter. So this is the same yarn that I used in, in, in this. This is what the, that uh, DK weight colour looks like that I uh, doubled with the f fake mohair. I have no memory of any of these, I think, the, the patterns. But I just wanted a very plain, simple beanie style that was quite fitted to a head so that it would look okay when you rolled, basically. So I made this one. And I think yeah, it's good. So that's a, a bamboo merino. It's, it's quite a heavy yarn, but it's very nice and soft. I use this yarn a lot for baby. Um, garments that's why i had some of it in my stash because i just got a lot of it when it was on clearance and then my babies grew up to kids and i didn't need it anymore so i made one of those uh, i'll put details below again i was just trying to figure out what would work and uh, i've read a lot of online stuff and books about what sort of fiber would be okay and everything and I just try to figure it out so I, I was going to very soft soft yarn um so I did that one I did the same again but this is a merino silk yarn that is hand dyed I can't remember the dye now but it's something that I purchased uh, from a hand dyer on Etsy and uh it's a bit shorter. It's feels it's still heavy because it has the silk, um, but it is it is a bit shorter in. So it's it sits a bit more up on your head. I don't know if I can wear this one here. Yeah, it's a bit like that. Um. So I made one of those. Uh, might be that I wear them when it gets colder, who knows. And then I had this idea that I wanted to make a beret. Um, and again, I was just stuck on that I wanted something that was soft. And I thought, I need some cotton. So I went and bought this spotlight. Bella Baby Tut Garrock 4-ply, 100% cotton. Got a couple of those. And from most of one of them i made this beret and this is a pattern did i find it at pearl soho 
can't remember. <laughs> so that's that one. And it was, it's a fingering weight cotton. On, no, I need on two millimeter needles. So it was, I would not say that it was a very enjoyable knit. And it did how I made it because you feel like you're just making this huge thing. So I think I started doing the decreases too early. So it's, it's quite little. It wouldn't actually cover my head, I don't think. But I made it. And now I know if I want to make a beret again, I, I know more to do. I actually would like to make one um, in a colour work in wool, actually. I might do that sometime. But I have that. So that's three. And then um, I wanted to make something with a bit more texture. So I made the Angus hat, I think it is, by, um, you know, whoever one knits from. Petite Knit, I think, isn't it? I think it is. It's a free pattern. Um, so I used, this is a cotton merino that I had in my stash. I used that. And um, if you have made anchors and you've, I don't know, the jumper or cardigan or whatever the patterns there are for it, you can maybe see that I haven't done it correctly. I didn't realise until I was up here that between these sections you meant to um, shift the ribbing so that it doesn't align. It's meant to, I don't know, be, I don't know, staggered or something. Um, I didn't do that it's all right and this one I actually I actually quite like this one um I don't know just because it has that texture it doesn't have lots just plain ribbing just feels like it's um yeah I like it I like how it looks uh, and again that was a nice soft yarn um, yeah, so they are some hats that I made and I, I might, I might wear them, um, who knows, but it was a good process knitting, a good thing to keep my hands busy, felt that I was, I felt like I was doing something useful or that I thought might be useful. So I did those, good project for summer, I guess. And then what? Oh, one thing that I did over summer was that I finished up the advent cowl that I made with my advent calendar. So I, let's see, this was the first day and this was the last day. So I grafted it, those two together to make um, a cowl. <laughs> Before I did that, I did actually weave in all the ends um, of that. So it's, yes, 100% complete. It is the beautiful white gum wool and it's so soft, merino and silk. And this is going to be so lovely to wear when it gets colder. I'm so happy that I got it done. That was great. Now, what else? Okay, still on things that I've finished and I have things that I'm working on, so I better move on. One thing I finished the other day was a pair of socks. Just plain vanilla socks. I don't really use a pattern except for that I use the fish lips kiss heel um, method or pattern for the heels. This main skein is a self-striping yarn that I bought from a supermarket in Sweden when I was in Sweden one year. And then I had some Fable from Drops in this tealy blue colour. So I used that. So I used almost all of the 50 gram skein for this. So that it works really well for me with 50 gram skeins for making socks. So I made those and I have woven in all the ends and they're completely 100% finished. I need to wash them maybe, but maybe I'll wear them first. Another recent finish. Sorry. 
Um, another recent finish is from some new yarn that I bought actually. I bought this yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's called Calypso. It was a limited edition. I think it might still be available actually on the website. It's a 60% wool and 40% cotton yarn. This one is called Rockpool and the Calypso is, I think the main yarn is the wool and then it has these slub bits of cotton in a different colour. I had three of those 200 gram balls. You can see I still have one untouched. And I made a jumper. I... No, I don't have those. But I had picked up some 5mm needles in a sale. The um, Now I can't remember what they're called. But they're sort of square and have a texture to them. They're addies. Anyway, I had new 5mm needles just because I picked them up on a clearance. And I really wanted to use them. And I really wanted to use this yarn. So what I did was I did a swatch. I checked what gauge I had, then I checked what patterns I had, and a pattern that was suit suited for the gauge that I got using five millimeter needles. Can't remember now what the gauge was, but it was a, a, a jumper called Oat that I had purchased to use for. Was planning to use it for my knit eaten yarn. Uh, it is well. It is a jumper like this, just very simple, top-down raglan. But in the pattern, it actually has some lace patterning on the sleeves. And I think they have made it in a mohair or something nice, nice and, and fluffy. <laughs> but I thought I just wanted to use that, um, like the increases and decreases pattern and the shape not using the patterning on the sleeves and just get a very simple jumper and i'm really happy with how this came out it was it was very nice to knit it was just a lovely gauge and um very relaxing i thought maybe knitting in this really dark yarn would be troublesome but it wasn't it was i just i really enjoyed it and yes it used i think 325 grams i weighed it because i was going to be good <laughs> put it on ravelry um i made it hip length and i just made the sleeves straight and then did creases just before the the cuff so it's just very wearable piece really and just a very nice fabric so i also have the i think hibiscus color of this yarn which is a hot pink and i have two skeins of that so i could make another one or at least i know with this gauge i could make um i can make a garment for myself in that color as well so that's that one oat what's the pattern that I used and that was I um, was happy to be able to use that pattern because I had actually purchased it and put it in my Ravelry library and I have a few of those garment patterns that I have purchased and then I just never get around to making them and I just leave them in my queue and they just sit there in my queue staring at me think and I'm thinking I really need to do that now I need to find the perfect perfect yarn and just do it but a lot of them I know there's something with brioche there's something that I think maybe now I feel like it's not really the shape that I want to make but I still feel like I, I need to make them because I did pay money for the pattern um, and at least I don't want to purchase anything new any new pattern until I have used a few more of the patterns in my library unless it's something that i know that i'm going to just i'm going to knit it straight away so um until i know i'm going to cast 
something on in at that time in that moment i'm not purchasing the, <laughs> not purchasing any more patterns i i i have a few in my queue that i need to make not that i i think it's wrong to um support the designers um, I'm, I'm happy to do that but sometimes it just stresses me out if i have too many things that i'm planning and not actually making okay so that's things that i have finished uh, over summer and i do have some other things talking about bendigo and stuff from there i had this in my stash it is RFW, which is a recycled fiber wool, I think they call it, something like that. It's a wool alpaca and bamboo. This one is a colorway fossil. I think I purchased this uh, like four years ago or something. Pre-COVID, I'm pretty sure. It was a limited edition. Uh, this one is that, um, I don't know gray i think it is but it is warm gray and it has flecks of red blue yellow green in it it's a bit of a tweezy look i had this and i had specific plans for it didn't quite work out i was trying to make the siri cardigan which is pattern that i purchased i've never made it so i feel like it's something i need to do excuse me now all my stuff is on the floor um but then um i decided i'm just going to make a plain cardigan out of that because as i mentioned before <laughs> discussed some detail i need cardigans that are suitable for offers and that i feel like are a bit more not formal but yes nice office wear so i happened um across um some cardigans in a book by Maya Carlson. Maya Carlson is the Swedish designer that designed the red cardigan, the, the red and purple cardigan, which I won't show you again now because I've got other stuff on top of it. Um a Swedish designer and she has a book called Koftor, which is cardigans in Swedish. And I had a look in that over summer because I found it as an ebook. Um, and there was a nice cardigan there that um, fitted the gauge that I got and the shape that I wanted because I made have I made another one of those anyway I, I like that one and I thought okay I like that construction I like the shaping I, I trust that this will work out but the cardigan that I chose in this book, I just chose what had knitted around with the steak, had the right gauge and everything. I like the, the shape. It's called Kans. Uh, what would that be? Wreath. And it does have a colour work, like a wreath on it. But I thought I'll just omit that and just knit it plain. And that's what I have done. And this has been a really really nice neat um again i purchased some needles on clearance and they were 3.25 millimeters which is something that i don't have many of and that's just what i wanted to use so that's the gauge that i i selected and you can see i have made most of this this is also a bottom up cardigan and then with the creases for the shoulders and you need the sleeves and attach them before you need the top part so I just um, did that and I just cast off today and I've picked up the button bands before I stake it so it is um, really quite a plain I think the color will be good for lots of things it did come out a bit chunkier looking than what i really am aiming for 
But I think, you know, winter gets cold. Surely you need to wear thick cardigans. Uh, it is, I think, to my hip again. So it's not super short. Even though I felt like I was making it quite short. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward to getting this done. It'll be nice. It'll be very nice. I have to find some buttons. And I like how it has the different colours in it. I don't think you can see it very well on the camera. But yes, that's very good. And then I have uh, a couple of jumpers that I'm sort of at the starting stages of. So I won't share them with you today. But that's something that I guess I'll pick up now that I have finished a few things. One thing that I... I can show you that I'm working on that's quite cute it's a little sock I'm going to make it just a shorty sock for my nine-year-old she really loves the shorty socks that I have made for her I haven't actually shown this to her it's going to be a bit of a surprise it's yellow and it's sparkly so it's perfect for her and these have been quite fun to work on I haven't spent a lot of time on them but I will do that um, Again, I have one other plain vanilla sock on the needle at the moment that I work on when I'm um, on my way to work and at times where I'm, I'm waiting. Um, so I'll finish them soon and then I think these will be the socks that I work on. Then one last thing that I'll share with you that I have been working on is something <laughs> a bit um, fun. And I guess that was sort of leading to life stuff more. I had this sublime, luxury, like luxurious woolly merino. I guess it's a boot clay, and it's a merino, ninety-six merino and four percent nylon. Beautiful yarn that someone very generously gave me after I purchased some other yarn in a D stash from them. So I had quite a bit of this and um, as I was having, um, starting having chemo treatment, which is sort of what's been going on um, recently, um, I thought, oh, I really need a poncho. For the first time in my life, I felt like I really need a woolen, a woolly hug, a poncho, a, a poncho, and a poncho because you know you need access to stuff to get infusions and stuff. And I thought poncho would be like a blanket, a wearable blanket that gives access to people to, you know, <laughs> prick me with stuff. And yeah. So anyway, I looked up ponchos and I started knitting a very big poncho this is meant to have like a, a bit of a fold over big neckline and then it just has some shaping over the shoulders so i'm knitting on five millimeter needles i think i may be 200 grams into it and now um it sits quite nicely i've tried it on i might get it down to below my hips a bit maybe and then I think that will be just be a nice light fluffy warm thing to wear so that was that was fun to be able to use that wool for something that um I feel or something that can be quite nice and useful so that's a poncho <laughs> And then I just recently um, saw that there was a pattern for a vest using that type of yarn that looked really cool. And I thought, oh, do I do I rip it out and make this vest instead? But no, I'm committed now. I'm, that poncho is happening. <laughs> I only have maybe another 50 grams and then I will um, have that ready. And I think it'll be really nice for the winter and um, my continued treatment really okay then um as i said and you you might you know if you follow me you know what's been going on um 
if not you know that's fine everything's everything's good if you're only interested in knitting and yarn um that's i've shown you what i was going to show you this time and i'll just give you a bit of an um an update i guess because i don't want to leave you hanging <laughs> um and i know people like i've put i've put it on instagram that i was um diagnosed with breast cancer before christmas um but i know that people don't you know like me you don't you're not on instagram all the time you don't get all you don't see everything that you follow so you miss out on information i just didn't want I just didn't really know how else to let people know and not be in people's face really too much. Um, but yeah, so that happened. So that means that the summer has been a little bit different. <laughs> There's a lot of logistics involved with, um, yeah, having a diagnosis and having to... Um, undergo treatment and still you know look after your children and your home and work so that's all really what i've been focused on everything is going quite well really i've um i don't know details are a bit I don't know if it's relevant um but like i guess how i explain it to my kids is that i i had surgery the cancer is actually gone but i needed to have um chemo treatment just to make sure that um there's no little traces left but um it's it was low grade um i wasn't in any way feeling sick just um we're lucky to was lucky to um discover it and i have regular scans um because this is this is not my first rodeo as they say i actually had breast cancer back in 2016 i think um and that's also the reason why i have to go through more um treatment this time last time i only had radiotherapy and i was my youngest was only just turned three and i was still i was working part-time and I, we just kept going with life really um but yes this time it's a little bit more um a bit more <laughs> but luckily my kids are um older and i think we sort of I guess past experience we know a bit more what we're doing and um i i know my doctors i i'm so happy with everyone that's looking after me and i was also so fortunate that i got a new job just before everything just sort of changed um and we found out about all the stuff that I would have to do this year but yes I, I got that new job and it's so wonderful um great people and i really enjoy it it's interesting and it just it's has flexibility in it that just makes things work really well for me so that's yeah that's really good so i've had this great thing happen and at the same time and i'm just i'm lucky in so many different ways um and i've had so many lovely people viewers and other people in my life that have um reached out to me and just said wonderful things i've had gifts sent to me and um it's just it's it's so wonderful i'm so grateful i'm i just i i feel so much love for everyone um 
and you know it does make things better for me I guess knowing that there's people that care um, so that's really wonderful I'm, I'm so lucky um, so yes that's really what's happening I'm, I'm we're just trying to just um, keep the weeks you know happening without too much, too much trouble you know it's all about logistics really it just you know making sure kids get to school we get to work we get to doctor's appointments I go in for my treatments and that everything just happens when it needs to happen and it's working so far I've had all of my heavy-duty chemo um, and now I'm going into a um, a different type of chemo that's a lower dose that's toxic but I get it every week instead of every second week so that's uh, three months of weekly infusions and they're different so I don't really know how it react at all you know obviously my body is slowly breaking down because you know I'm giving it poison um, so that's interesting to say the least but you know it could be so much worse it could be so much worse sorry I'm not yeah yeah I'm you know I'm happy to have everything in my life I'm so happy that I have knitting I have not been able to do any dyeing for quite some time because I've had surgery and because I have days with the chemo when I am just I'm not feeling too bad I'm just feeling a bit unsettled and tired and um yeah I just I just need rest so means that the days that I actually have when I'm feeling well for doing things with family and for working they're more they're limited and the fewer the normal so fitting other things in is just not easy so I don't know how how that will all turn out or what I'll do with that but I still have stock in my shop and it's open and I ship um, like I normally do so it's there if anyone's interested um yeah so I guess I, I wanted you to know everything's fine and I'm I'm so grateful for all the messages and it really means so much um, and um, knitting has really been so good to keep uh, busy and focused because one thing that happens to me when um, I've had all the you know, poison pumped into me is that all my senses get a bit off so I feel like I, I can't see or hear or feel or taste things properly and the only time when I actually feel like I'm okay I feel like myself is if I'm really focused on just one thing so just sitting and knitting and just focusing on that it's just it feels so good <laughs> and then it also feels great to actually feel like you're productive when you're not really being productive at all so that's really life update we're just getting through it really that's and you know trying to just enjoy good things and laugh and yeah focus on happy good things all right I think I've done I think two or three snippets of videos and it's kind of probably going to turn out to be quite a long one but I haven't done this for a bit so I had a lot to show you and I still have things I have not shown you and we'll see when that will be next. Um, 
thank you so much for joining me here in my studio and um, letting me talk at you for a bit about all these things that I have been enjoying. If you have a good cardigan pattern that you would recommend, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, that's another thing. Comments. I sometimes get a notification that I have a comment and I go in to see it and it's gone and then I can't find it again. It's really odd. So I'm so sorry if someone has sent put a comment on my videos and I'm not responding or anything. It's because I just can't I can't find it again. It's it's just odd. So I'm sorry, but I'm hoping that's just like that just happened a few times, but normally I will see comments. So yes, please, cardigan pattern recommendations. I would love that. Um, but apart from that, I think I'm good. <laughs> I'm just so happy that you're out there and that you're supporting me. And I know that a lot of you are um, sending me a lot of, you know, positive thoughts and and vibes and you're thinking of me and it means a lot so thank you so so much and um yes everything means a lot to me um okay that's it i think this was a bit of a <laughs> disaster but hey i'm here and and you got a bit of an update so i hope i hope um you had a bit of a relaxed time with me. All right, it's um, Saturday afternoon and we have a long weekend, so I'm just going to go and enjoy that time off. I'm a week after chemo, so I'm um, feeling quite good. All right, everyone, that's enough. Take care, everyone. And I will see you when it's a good time again. So until then, take care. Bye.